Hello ladies and gentlemen, yes, Zeke here again today to bring you a quick tutorial about how to use open camera and your phone in, or your Android phone in order to take very, very good miniature pictures. So first of all, what you're going to need is a black box. I was lucky enough to find a black box that once I opened it up was freestanding, and um, this was just from a tablet. So I just kind of opened that up and left it as is exactly. Of course, folded it so that it would stay open, and here you go. There is your very, very, very makeshift, um, makeshift light box. So another thing you're going to need, if you want to do this how I do it, is you're going to need your phone attached to your TV. Um, I use an app called Visor. Any app that I mention in this is a one-time purchase and is very cheap. A visor, I think, is $5. It allows you to mirror your phone to your computer. Um, I highly recommend picking it up. So, at this point, you have the open camera app which I'm currently in at the moment I can actually click on this and you can see all the camera settings so this once again is just called open camera um, and you're gonna want to change a few settings in here right away so let's start by going to the settings um, the actual settings up here first of all you're gonna want to change the camera API to camera 2 if at all possible this allows you to actually um, use focus bracketing which is very very useful although we will not be covering it today and also allows you to use more manual settings um, if your phone can't do API 2 um, then it's an older phone I'm sorry about that you can still use open camera to take pretty damn good pictures the next thing you want to go, going to want to do is go to the photo settings right here set the image quality to hundred um, percent and then right here under raw shoot DNG raw only so you will need Photoshop in order to process it or another photo processing app, which there are plenty of free ones online, but I will be using Photoshop today. So you can also take standard and DNG and then it will save as a JPEG and a DNG. Um, I just like to do DNG because I like to actually kind of tweak my photos a bit. And then you want to turn on, why is my volume thing stuck? Am I, I think I'm sitting on the volume right now. There we go. Yeah. So um, then you want to check allow raw for exposure bracketing and allow raw allow allow raw for focus bracketing. Um, I'm pretty sure that is almost all you really need to do. The rest of these you can actually adjust from where you need to. Um, copyright you can actually put stamps on your photos, things like that. You can change the font size. None of that matters though. So let's go back a step or two here. Um, you might want to play around in the settings a tiny bit, uh, change up the on-screen GUI and the camera preview. But for now, I'm just going to leave those all as is. And then you have this. This is pretty good, but what you want to do is you actually want to adjust for the bare minimum amount of light that you want. So just enough to pick up the colors. So I'm going to kill the ISO entirely and change the... Uh, aperture to 1 over 40. So as you can tell this is now quite dark. My style of photo works best for high contrast like almost black and white models. So now I'm actually going to pick up my phone so enjoy the slight motion sickness here because I'm taking it out of its mount. And I'm going to bring it right to the point where the black takes up almost the entire screen a bit further forward. I'll actually move this mini a bit further back. There we go. And I also do have one of these little clip-on desk lights that I'm using to get extra light and to angle my light properly. I highly recommend using one of them. If not, there's plenty of um, camera lights you can buy on Amazon for $15, $20. So then you want to get this guy just in focus. And kind of angle him. Try to make sure there's no odd light coming in. Um, I'm going to get this going from a bit lower so I can actually see his face, center him in the picture, and then take the picture. I will often actually use the controls on visor on my computer and actually lock the camera in place while I'm taking these pictures. Um, to do that, you just click on the visor screen. You have full control using visor. So if I need to adjust things while keeping my camera steady, steady I can adjust the ISO here. Just doing that on my computer and I can adjust the aperture right here 
In all honesty, I'm not quite sure which one I should keep lower if I should, because I know about 200 ISO is still acceptable. Maybe it's better to keep the aperture slightly more open or slightly more closed, like 1 in 200. But for that, I'm not entirely sure. If somebody does know, please do leave that in the comments. And I'm going to take one more picture at that secondary aperture level, just because. And there we go. So now my phone is going to go through a bit of a epileptic fit because I am showing you the wrong screen. So I'm going to erase this and then re-add my screen so that you can see it in its current format so I can explain to you Resilio Sync. This is a free piece of software that I use in order to get my um, phone pictures onto my computer immediately. And I actually have a persistent sync setup between the two. So I just have to go to video capture device. OK. And then I just got to choose visor again. And there we go. And now I have to make it small so you can actually see it when the screen's in this setup. Perfect. So right here I have Sync. This is Resilio Sync, R-E-S-I-L-I-O-S-Y-N-K. So you want to add that, add that. And you see I have four folders here, and one is DCIM. What you want to do is add your DCIM as a share. So you hit this plus button right here in the bottom right corner. And then you go Create Folder. And then location, you have to be able to browse device storage, and then DCIM is right here, and you just hit choose folder. That will be all your cameras and all the videos that you take. This is also a very good way of getting things like audiobooks and music onto your phone because you can just drag them into a folder on your computer, the DCIM folder specifically, and then there they are. So then you're going to want the app on your computer as well. Just look up on Google Resilio Sync. There is a free version that is for um, non commercial use, that's the one that you want. And after you've done that, after you've created the folder, you actually head to the folder itself and then hit the three dots in the top right corner there and hit, nope, oh, never mind, that is kind of wrong. You hit the plus button right there. Ooh, nope, that's not it either. You go back and you hit the information button right here. Yes, there we go. And then you hit share right up here and you'll have to set the permission. Right now my permission is read and write. Um, because I'm only sharing with myself. So you can change the settings to read and write using the little settings indicator there. Link expires never, one-time link, approvals. So the great thing about Resilio Sync is if anybody else tries to share the link that you are um, sharing with them, then it actually sends you a message saying, do you want to accept this share? So you'll always have the ability to not accept a share if a suspicious one comes in. Okay, so once you um, hit the link, you can open that on your computer. It'll open the Resilio Sync app. You can share it and link it to a file on your computer. Um, mine, and I will actually create a new scene here so you can see. There we go. Endless loop right there. There we go. Mine is just hanging out in pictures. And then Sync is what I call it. And then right here under Open Camera, you can see there is the last two pictures I took already there for me. So I'm going to erase these previous pictures because I like to keep this folder clean. And then I'm going to open the second picture because I think it turned out slightly better. And open that up in Photoshop. Now this isn't, I'm not Photoshopping it. I'm just editing the photo in order to um, do the post-processing that, that photographers do. So let's just crop this real quick. No, honestly, this one needs very little post-processing, so crop it to its correct size. Um, modern cameras can take quite high-resolution pictures, so there's no real need to um, be all that close to the model when you actually take the picture. A bit further back will actually help your camera focus. And then I tend to pump up the contrast a tiny bit just to really get those recesses shaded, and maybe up the exposure, although I don't think I need to this time. Um, no, honestly, I kind of wish I had focus bracketed this in order to get the tail end into um, focus, but that is all right. Then I just hit save image, save, and I am done. So this is how I personally get, um, get photos done on my computer or miniature photos done in general. It works best with a very almost black and white color scheme. If I try to do it with a different color scheme, I kind of end up with mixed results. 
Um, the photos are still very good, but I can't completely black out the background like this very easily. A uh, better photographer could. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.